All right, your next project, assignment five, is inspired by lots of really, really bad GIF animations online and knowing that you can do them better. But what is an animation? It is the illusion of movement of characters in a setting, and that illusion is created by sequential images. Images played at a certain timing back to back. All right, so here we have all these people. They're the different characters getting sucked into this baby's face. We can play it forward and backwards. What makes it a fun art form that you see a lot on the internet is that because it's limited in colors to only 256 and generally at pretty low resolutions, when you play them online, it embeds the animation into what you're playing. So they have to be viewed through a web browser, but once they are, it will set the timing for you. So it looks like an art form of movement rather than an art form of just creating a lots of different pictures in sequence. So pretty straightforward. How are we going to do this for our class? Well, just like Terry Gilliam, the, the, the only American of the Monty Python crew and the one who did their animation sequences, uh, he would cut pictures from, from magazines, from old uh, illuminations, kind of posters and prints of medieval illuminations, and would then uh, take a photograph of them, move them a little bit, take another photograph of them, move them a little bit. And so basically he was compositing from other people's images. And that's what we're going to do, except we're going to steal from ourselves. So here's a, an animation that features a fantasy landscape I created in a past semester, features a creature I created in the, in the last semester, a fantasy creature, both of which were composited from other people's pixels, right? So what, what does animation bring to it? Well, what I need you to do is to showcase some form of transformation or metamorphosis in your animation. So you'll notice that my creature isn't just walking across the landscape. My creature changes from being kind of a rock to expanding into this kind of crab-like creature and then walking across the landscape. Other examples might show the, uh, the setting itself transform. So here it gets stormy, it starts to, to have lightning, and that lightning causes the character to have a transformation, right? Another example, here the character comes in and transforms the landscape. Now, what you will get from these is that they're made for showing online. So they are not meant to be printable, full, high-res images. And they can't really be and still play effectively. So they're, they're distorted, and they're only 256 colors, and they're going to be somewhat choppy. But if you design them well, they can be compelling. So how are you going to go about deciding what you're going to do? You're going to start with a sketch. And I want you to do nine squares as your storyboard with space between them and do three on three, right? I say on the assignment sheet, you can use as many as 12 if you want to, but this is kind of the cleanest, you know, best portfolio quality one. So you show the actions of your character on your setting and you show the beginning of your story in the first three, the middle of your story in your second three, and the, the end of your story in the bottom three. What I do not want you to do is change settings, because that's what's called changing scenes. Whenever you change a place or you change in time, that's a new scene. And we don't have time to make a, a movie here. <laughs> you know, We need to have a little kind of GIF animation that shows in one scene. But there's a lot of variety of ways you can do that. You can do things like panning the camera. I have one animation that, that only changes the setting. That's this one. You'll see it better in the storyboard. Where the tree stays the same, 
but the the setting it, storm clouds gather gather uh, lightning hits the tree and that's the transformation that the setting transformed so what's the character in this animation because there's always a character what would you say you might say the clouds you might say the sky because they're the things that are active right but I would say the tree because to me what character is is it's the thing that the audience experiences the story through does that make sense like this could be an animation of a paper clip on a desk and then the desk like starts to get flooded like water's coming in right but that paper clip always stays the same but then it starts floating but we're experiencing that transformation through the paperclip. So the paperclip's the character. Now, very often the character is the thing that changes. That's the character arc, right? But you can also have the setting change. So here the character doesn't change, the setting changes around the character. Right? And the camera angles can change. And all you have to do is use one thing that you've already designed. But in my demos, I tend to like to use a few of the things. But we'll play with kind of camera movements. Um, what you don't want is just to have something tiny animating. <coughs> Instead, you want it to really, if you want to zoom in on something, zoom in so it's not always tiny. So we can tell what the movement is. And then the other big trick to this, to making it really watchable as a GIF animation, which can play endlessly, is that it loops around that you have a way of connecting the beginning to the end, right? So here on the storyboard, the ending is very different than the beginning, but when you actually make the animation, you're thinking, okay, how is it going to set to reset and make sense? Instead of just being a jump cut right to the beginning. So we start with a sketch, and these are the things that you need for narrative storytelling. By using my past examples, I don't need to redraw any of this. We need a character, something that your audience experiences the story through, right? That could be something new you create. That could be a new thing you composite in. That could be the cloud you just created. <laughs> whatever, you, whatever you think you want to have the audience experience a transformation through. You need some sort of setting because even if you put your character on a blank white background, the audience will assume a setting. In fact, there's a past student example where there's a little kind of gerbil creature. It's their composite creature. He's just eating flowers. It's just on a white background. But because there's flowers there, we assume this is outside, right? So be mindful of what the setting is. And then you need the illusion of time passing. And we're gonna get that through playing sequential images, but we're gonna heighten that illusion of time passing by making it a transformation of some sort. So if you just had the creature eating flowers, that's really not enough of a transformation of the landscape, that there were flowers and now there aren't. So instead, the character is eating flowers in the very Monty Python style, an anvil comes down and crushes the character, and blood splurts out. And then that blood seeps into the ground, and the flowers start growing. And then the character comes in, and like, then the anvil drop, sets to reset. Right? That's a transformation from, from full animal to crushed animal. That's the transformation. All right, and that's why for this one, I have my character just frolicking around, but that's just what's called a movement test. That's not really transforming anything. So you'll see what the transformation is. This T-Rex comes in, eats him, runs away. So he turns from a character into you know, a mouthful. Now this animation has a lot going on. I was probably a little too ambitious. I usually am in these. But for every change in each picture, because remember, these are just sequential images, you need to create layers that I call assets that you can turn on and off or move. So each rain layer has to be turned off separately and changed for each panel, for that rain to keep moving, for the mist to keep running across. Um, all of that are different assets that we're going to layer up. So the best way to think about this in, in actually making your, your animation is as a stop motion film. So going back to kind of Terry Gilliam stuff, how does he do this without a computer? 
these are simply, let's see, I had them open in preview, a bunch of different images. I'll open it up in preview instead of through a web browser. So this animation is in total, it's very efficient, only 19 frames, right? 19 images. But he doesn't paint this as one image, and then paint this as one image, and then paint this as one image. No, he cut out these different characters from different photographs. He cut out each of these uh, aspects, everything that's going to move, he cut out as a separate little piece of collage, right? Then he puts them flat on a table, takes a photograph of them. Then for the next one, he cuts out something else, a different piece for her mouth that moves up or a different head that's cut out. Then for the next one, he just moves that cut out and tilts it a little bit and all the rest stay the same. He takes the photo. Next one, next one, next one, next one. Big jump there. Yeah, it can be. So basically, we're going to be creating them frame by frame. But we want to do them and, and utilize the advantage of digital, which is you can make perfect copies each time. So instead of having to draw each frame, we're going to use assets. So notice what happens to this guy. He tilts, and then he's all of a sudden, his head's in the baby's mouth. right? But for most of the frames, he's just the same, same asset. doesn't change until he does, and then that happens very quickly. But that means that Terry Gilliam never needs to do anything more with that guy than just move him. He never needs to recreate him. But it's really about the organization of a lot of different assets that make the story. All right, so it will make sense if we start to, to sketch it out. So what if it was, um, let's say, Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas? I like this example um, because the McNay Museum every Halloween shows some of these, these assets, some of the sculptures, some of the sets that they build. And if we look for, and I'll show you really quickly, as an image search tool, you can limit under tools the type to be animated. So these will be GIFs. So let's look at an example. And you can actually composite with GIFs in Photoshop. So something like that, something like this. Now, this is created the exact same way Terry Gilliam made his animations. But Terry Gilliam's were flat. Here, Tim Burton makes a model out of Sculpey on a wire armature, and he lights it for a photograph with this red light, really dramatic, with these Christmas lights in the background. And he takes one photo, then he moves the model a little bit, takes another photo, moves the model a little bit, takes another photo. So these are the three components you'll need to make your animation. The same components you need for any, any animation. You need character, you need setting, and you'll need to separate out all your assets, all the different little things that you might want to have move. All right, so let's get into it. How do we sketch for it? So in this, in this scene, these trees are assets, right? Because that tree is going to go in front of him. So that has to be kept on a separate layer. So we're going to have what's called the stage, and we're going to have our assets file, two different Photoshop files. On the assets file, we build up every little layer, every little thing, every twinkling star as a separate layer that we organize together like a puppet show onto a frame. Once we have that frame, we merge it all together, we move it over to the stage, and that's like the photo that goes into the film. So it's a little confusing, but we'll, we have time to work with it. This one looks fun. All right, and we'll make them work. So now it's the creative part. How do we come up with our transformation? This is your homework. We have to sketch, and we have to sketch out a storyboard. 
a rough plan for what we're going to do. So that's what we'll do next.